Hello, everyone. Welcome. Our next speaker I'm proud to present is Matthew Wilcox. He's here all the way from Ottawa, Canada, so there's quite a temperature difference between home and here. And he is, tells me he's been to 15 LCAs, which is pretty impressive. Good job. Um, and he, today he's been talking about large pages in Linux. Please welcome Matthew Wilcox. Thank you. Um, I'm not actually going to be talking about any products, but I thought, you know, for the sake of lawyers, I should include that. Um, so, every time your CPU does a load or a store, it translates the virtual address that you give it into a physical address. And that is done by using what's called a translation look-aside buffer, which is mercifully abbreviated as uh, TLB, um, in order to cache recent translations. Then, because not every translation is recent, sometimes you're going to miss in that cache, because caches, as we all know, are never large enough. And so on a cache miss, depending on the CPU architecture, some CPUs will walk a page table data structure in their hardware and others will expect software to do it. They'll have a special instruction or a special mechanism for software to insert new TLB entries. Um, Linux, based on x86 heritage, assumes that you have a page table. Um, but it, it's, it's abstracted, so it can be tuned to match um, pretty much any hardware that has its own uh, physical hardware, has, has its own physical definition. And this, this is an example stolen uh, from the uh, Intel, um, Intel manuals on, CP, on CPUs. Their terminology is completely different to Linux's. They call a, what we call a virtual address, they call a linear address. What they call a, a, a page table, we, we call the PMD. What they call the directory, we call the PUD, and so on. Um, but basically, the, the idea is that um, you, 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 you take bit you take uh, nine bits at a time out of the address, and you use that to index a table. And the tables form, form a tree, and you walk down the tree until you find the, uh, the, the, the address you're looking for. Um, and of course, because we're, we're talking about x86, um, this, is, this is actually, the hardware does this for us. So the, the CPU includes a page table walker. So in order to set up a page table, all you do is write um, an entry into the page table, and then the CPU just handles the rest of it itself. Um, but Linux does always walk it in software, um, because there, there, there are times when we, need, when we need to do the translation ourselves from a virtual address to a physical address. And to do that, we will go off and walk the CPU's page tables. Of course, architectures such as Spark, which don't have hardware page table walkers, you, you will, Linux goes off and, and walks those page tables um, on, a, uh, every, on every page fault that misses in the, uh, in, the, in the TLB cache. But what I, what I want to be sure people understand is that there is a difference between a TLB entry and a page table entry. Um, people confuse the two all the time. Um, so a, a page table entry may or may not be a concept supported by hardware, but the, the TLB entry absolutely is a hardware thing. Um, if, if, if you want to know more about how Linux does the abstraction, um, there's, there's a gentleman who uh, used to be at the University of Helsinki who wrote his uh, master's thesis on uh, how this uh, should be done, and you, you can find that here. Um, so how big are TLB entries? Um, t t TLB entries, uh, the, the whole translation look aside buffer, this, this is one of those really incredibly important parts of the CPU. Um, we, we, we talk about things like three cycle load to use times. So in three clock ticks, we have to get, we have to, do, we, we have to look up in the cache, we have to do the translation. There's, there's a lot of stuff going on. So this has to be really, really, really fast. So we can't, so CPUs generally don't support every single possible page size. They will support a number of page sizes. Um, x86 is the, uh, has the fewest, but um, Mitanium has the most because that was, that was Itanium's selling feature. It had every single feature that has ever been put in the CPU. <laughs> now, the, I, I think this, this table may be a slightly better way of seeing the, the same information. Um, 
and, and what, what you can see is that really almost every single page size has been supported on some CPU at some point. Um, I mean, not all these CPUs are necessarily all that current, but they, 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 they have at least existed at some point uh, and, and, and were relevant to Linux at some point. Um, if you take a, if, if you go back, the 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 Vax, the Vax was basically the first first computer to have a paging system back in 1977, and they decided to choose a 512 byte page size. Um, presumably, they had reasons for choosing 512 bytes. So I, I haven't been able to find out what those reasons were, but. Um, by the time we got to 1985, 512 bytes it was they'd realised was clearly too small. It was it was too granular, um, and what we really needed to ha to have for the 80386 was a four kilobyte size. Um, earlier Intel CPUs did not do paging, uh, the 286, the 186, and so on. The, the, those those had um, a segment based um, uh, memory protection system which was a competing CPU technology, which is, is essentially just out of favor. I mean, pe people don't make segmented systems anymore. Um, everyone, does, everyone does paging. And you can see, oh, oh, <laughs> and then the very first ARM CPU used, had, a, had a very interesting memory management system um, where it, it had 32 kilobyte pages um, if, if you put more than four megabytes of RAM in, in the system. Um, I, I, they, 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 they completely changed it to be like everybody else. Um, back with the, uh, the ARM 6, which I think came out in about 1994. Anyway, so when these systems were introduced, we had in the low thousands um, of number of pages. So, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000 pages, just because there wasn't that much memory. But by the time VAX got retired, um, it supported three and a half gigabytes of memory, which is 7,512 byte pages. X8664, <laughs> we're now up to 16 billion pages. That's a few orders of magnitude more. Uh, it, and it's, all, it's almost too many to support. Right. I mean, the, the, the amount of overhead we are incurring, attempting to manage all of this memory, and we, we, we have a huge amount of flexibility with that, right? A any page can be mapped anywhere by any process, and the, 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 the amount of information we need to be able to store to manage that kind of combinatorial explosion is, is, is huge. Um, I'm, of course, now also supports terabytes of memory. So, you know, it's not, not a sexy six. Everybody has this problem. We now have far more pages than we can handle. And this is a real problem. Um, for those of you who were in Christoph Lamenter's talk um, earlier today, you will have heard him talk about how in order to capture uh, 50 gigabytes a second of, of data to disk, um, he, he, he has to bypass a lot of the kernel because the kernel is trying to manage memory in four kilobyte chunks and he, he can't do it. He, he, he can't get 50 gigabytes a second. He's limited to like three or four gigabytes a second. So if we can manage memory in larger sizes, then a lot of these problems start to go away. Now, Linux has, been, has supported some larger page sizes um, since 2002. Uh, that work was done by Intel um, on Oracle's behalf. Um, we, we, had, we, we had a support for two megabyte pages back then. So x86 has 4K, two meg. I think at the time it didn't have uh, one gigabyte pages, but those, those got added later. Um, so in 2002, we added support for it, but you, 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 had to, you had to change your application to use it, which wasn't a problem for Oracle because at the time all Oracle cared about was the database. Um, these days Oracle cares about much more than the database because we're a cloud vendor, so we have very varied workloads. Um, 
we still care about the database. The database team is still very popular inside Oracle. They, they still bring in a lot of money, but um, we, we, my, my team is based, uh, is, is part of the cloud organization, and so uh, we, we care about a lot more workloads than just the database. But yeah, if, if you can use System 5 shared memory, which the database was quite happy to do, uh, then you can ask it explicitly, I would like to have two megabyte pages, or indeed these days, I would like to have one gigabyte pages. In 2011, uh, Red, Hat, um, one, uh, Red, Red Hat's developers introduced transparent huge pages, and that was to benefit KVM. Because when, when, when you are running a virtual, a virtual machine, you want to allocate a large chunk of memory, preferably contiguous, and just hand it all over to the guest to manage. And it's, it's all anonymous memory, which is just memory that you've allocated using like kmalloc or, or sorry, not k, sorry. <laughs> if, if, uh, some memory that you've allocated using malloc, or you've called mmap um, and specified map anonymous, um, this, this, this is memory which doesn't have a name, which is why it's called anonymous, and that, that's contrasted with memory that has a name, like you got it from a file. You, if you mmap a file, that's uh, file-based memory, or file-backed memory. Um, so that, that, that was a real performance win, because then it, for, 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 for KVM, the host could then use two megabyte pages to to map it, and then the guest can map it either in two megabyte pages or in four kilobyte pages. It all works great. So that was a real performance win. Um, in 2016, um, Intel uh, extended um, transparent huge pages to shared memory, uh, which also gave it support for tempfs. Uh, and so that, 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 that was a nice win for applications which were using tempfs. Um, it's also tra transparent. So again, you, you, you didn't have to do anything. If you happened to map stuff at uh, sufficiently large sizes, then you would start to just get two megabyte pages. And that's great. So we have this, this, this daemon called K huge page D, which walks around the system looking for pages which could be turned into a huge page. And so it, it will, it will, it will allocate memory and um, replace the pages that, that, that are uh, the, the, the four, all the four kilobyte pages. It will do one big two megabyte allocation and replace it and free all those old pages. And it can do that because we can do that to user space uh, without it knowing anything about it. And that's great. So now we get to, to uh, that, 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 that's all the background, which is pretty good. Um, now we get to large pages. And I've, I've, I've named them, uh, it, it, we need a new term, right? So huge pages already exist, gigantic pages exist. I'm going with large pages. And so large pages are, are, are a superset of huge pages in that every huge page is also a large page. It, it just means pages that are of an order, uh, the n and two to the n, an order uh, greater than zero. Actually, it turns out to be greater than one. For, for, for various boring reasons, we can't do order one pages. Fine, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Or, or order two um, is, 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 is better than order one anyway. Um, the, the huge page work was really driven by the CPU manufacturers, the, I mean, particularly Intel. Um, we only supported pages which had hardware support. Um, e even when we started adding a few more page sizes to uh, the huge TLBFS implementation, we only supported page sizes which were supported by the hardware. We, we asked the hardware, what page sizes do you support? And then we supported them in software. But we don't just care about hardware efficiency. We care about software efficiency too. I mean, like, like I said, when, you, when you've got a billion pages to manage, it would be helpful if you didn't have to manage a billion pages. If you, if you can cut that down by a factor of 10 or a factor of 20, then that's, that's good. Um, there's a downside, of course. I mean, the CPU manufacturers 
are kind of stuck with four kilobyte page sizes because that information, programmers know that information. Programmers know and interfaces expose that information. If you call MMAP um, with uh, an address which is not page aligned, then it won't work. So theoretically, POSIX has this interface where you call sysconf sc underscore page size, and it tells you what the page size is. But nobody uses that because everyone knows pages are four kilobytes, because pages have been four kilobytes for the last 30 years. And that's that. Um, which was, of course, one of the fun things when people were trying to support between x86 and Spark. Anyway, because uh, Spark only supports eight kilobyte page sizes and not 4K. Um, but there was a reason that four kilobytes got chosen. It, it, it's, it's kind of the, the sweet spot um, between wasting memory and uh, getting enough done at the same time. Uh, because if, if, if you're not using all of a four kilobyte page, maybe using two kilobytes of it, you're going to be wasting those other two kilobytes. And it turns out it's not really worth trying to use that, two kilo, that remaining two kilobytes for something else. Um, if you look at the distribution of file sizes on your system, you will find that there are a large number of files which are less than four kilobytes in size. Um, and so if, if, if you're using exclusively 64 kilobyte pages, you're going to be wasting 60, maybe 62 kilobytes. Um, whereas with a 4K page, you might only be wasting two kilobytes. So there's, there's definitely disadvantages to going up to 64 kilobytes. One of the things I, I was looking at with large pages is how large should we support? If we go all the way up to a gigabyte, well, that means every, every time I do a page fault, I'm going to be dragging a, a gigabyte off my disk. My laptop has an NVMe Express drive, very, very new, very modern. Um, it has, it, it's connected over a four gigabyte a second link. So by definition, I would only be able to do four page faults per second. That feels like we've gone too far. We've increased the page size too high. Now, Will it always be too high? I, I don't know. Maybe in 10 years, we'll, we'll see you know, a terabyte a second links. But maybe we won't. I don't know. I, uh, predicting the future is hard, it turns out. So we, 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 we need to be, we, we, we need to tune the software. We need, to be, we need to figure out, OK, how large should we do it? And ideally, we would make it auto-tuning. I'm not there yet. But I do want to say that this, the, the primary focus of this project is not to help the CPU. It's, it's not to expose all of the exciting new page sizes to the CPU. We're still going to treat them as 4K, 2 meg, uh, 1 gig pages, um, <coughs> at least for now. But it will put into place some of the infrastructure that would be needed for CPUs to support their 64K entries. I'm just not planning on doing that as part of this project. So last year at the LSFMM conference, and for those of you who don't know, that is the Linux Storage File Systems and Memory Management Conference. And uh, this year, we've added BPF to that conf conference as well. So I, I think we're now up to an eight-letter acronym conference. <clears throat> um, a few of us got together. Um, and decided that we wanted to do something um, about large pages. Um, and so this, this, we, we called ourselves the THP Cabal, and we have a, a meeting every fortnight. We haven't all met in person, um, but uh, we, 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 we do talk quite often on the phone. So we started out. Um, so we, we, we had a number of problems in common. We decided we were all going to work on all of them. Um, and the first, the first part of that was doing the huge read-only read, read page cache. And so this is primarily to, to benefit executables. Um, because up until this point, if you wanted to try and use the two megabyte um, 
entries on uh, in, in instruction TLB entries. You couldn't. Well, you could. You 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 could um, set up. You could copy your executable to tempfs and execute it on tempfs, <laughs> and then the kernel would would actually use uh, two megabyte pages. That's. Um, I mean, some some people will, will are crazy enough to do that kind of thing, but you're not going to do that for Perl, right? You're not going to copy your Perl executable, which I checked has a text segment larger than two megabytes, um, into tempfs in order to get the the sweet sweet performance improvements that are possible. Um, so this this was primarily done by Song, um, and had an enthusiastic review from myself and Kirill and and Bill. Um, so he, 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 his approach here was to say, okay, let's not worry about trying to do I.O. of a two megabyte page. Let's bring the pages in as normal. And then once the pages have been in cache for time, let's let k huge page D run through, notice that all these pages have been allocated and replace it with a single two megabyte page. And this, this, this was successful. Um, it's merged. It's in 5.4. Um, you have to enable it with a special config option, but it is in production inside Facebook. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think it's spread across the whole of their fleet yet, but um, it is apparently giving them good performance wins. Um, I don't have numbers to share with you, but um, it's the, 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 this, this is the first output from, the, from, from this project. So. This is good. The part that I was always more interested in was the large pages side of it. Um, and to me, the, the efficiency gains were, well, if, if, if we're doing, going to have large pages in the page cache, we should probably start out by having large pages in the page cache. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of having Q, K huge page D come through and, and combine them all together. Um, so what? What needs to change? Well, the, 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 block, the block layer is pretty good. The block layer already supports um, merging. If, if, if you send down requests which are consecutive on disk and consecutive in memory, it will combine them in, in, into a single request. So it already supports actually arbitrary size pages. Um, when I usually say arbitrary size pages, what I really mean is arbitrary power of two. But um, they, the, um, the, um, the block layer actually supports arbitrary lengths. So the page cache already had support for huge pages. But we just needed to generalize uh, some of that support um, to be arbitrary page size. So, when, 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 when you look at a page that's in the page cache, you, can, you, 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 can, you know its size. Um, there, are, there are a number of places which, which were assuming that if it was not a, an order zero page, like a, a single page, that uh, it was then definitely going to be a two megabyte page. Um, so I fixed a whole bunch of places, and, and that, that was relatively straightforward to just go through and find all the places that were making that assumption and, 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 and change them. That's fine. The trickier bit was uh, file systems, uh, because file systems tend to assume that if you give it a struct page, then it is exactly page size or 4,096 bytes on Intel. Um, and instead, those, pa those, the, those file systems have to go off and ask the page, what size are you? Um, I, I, I started working on this with XFS, and then um, XFS basically moved all of their code uh, from within XFS into IOMAP. And I, IOMAP is, is this new infrastructure we have in Linux that's come into being really in the last six or 12 months, um, which, is, which is basically they've taken the XFS IO path and moved it into a common library inside the VFS. Um, and we're trying to persuade other file systems to take it up. Um, there's definitely some, some have started to, um, others uh, less, less so. Um, I, I, I decided to do NFS for fun. 
Um, I was, I was, I was, I was stuck on something else, and I thought, eh, why, why, why don't I just do an, another file system? I mean, I've done XFS, I'll do another file system just to see how hard it is. And there were only six places in NFS that needed to change, so that, 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 was, that was quite encouraging. Well, I say that, I mean, I, I could only find six places. I haven't actually tested it. <laughs> so maybe there's seven or eight places that need to change, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, EXT4, still uses the grotty old buffer head code. Um, nobody likes the buffer head code. Nobody wants to touch it. So there's, the, there's a movement to try and persuade ext4 that it wants to use the IO map code, um, which is, I think, the most likely option for how ext4 gets support for huge pages or large pages. So the question is, um, OK, so, 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 so that's doing an IO. Okay, how do we get a large page into the page cache in the first place? So our first approach was to allocate, at page fault time, we would take a look and see, okay, is this two megabytes aligned? Um, oh, it is, great, okay, then we'll allocate, and, and is there nothing already in this two megabyte range? Okay, fine, then we will allocate a two megabyte page and do that IO. Unfortunately for, for various reasons that are complicated and boring to go into, uh, the, the, that, that defeated how the reader head code worked. So we would never get reader head working uh, while we were doing this, um, which is, um, it, it, a, a, a good chunk of I.O. performance, hap if, 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 you're, if you're doing a sequential read or, uh, if, or um, reading through memory of, of, of an MMAP, a large part of our performance is, is due to pipelining. We will do the, we, we will do the I.O. speculatively in advance of the next page fault happening uh, or, or the next read looking for a byte um, in order to avoid stalling. So we, we, we have the I.O. device um, bring the pages in ahead of when they're needed. And so this, this was probably going to be a performance problem. It was also a problem that we couldn't use read to create these huge pages. It had to be a page fault, so we, we didn't like that either. Um, and because the I.O. is synchronous, a page fault is going to have a long latency. You've got to wait for that two megabytes to be brought in from disk rather than having it come in earlier. So this, this was a bad design. So, we, so, so I, I, I was looking through it. I was looking at the patches that Bill had written to, to do that. Um, I mean, we, we'd, all, we'd all talked about what the design was going to be and decided you know, that was a good way to, to start. And we realized that, um, well, I, I, I realized that the right way to do this was actually to use the, read, instead of defeating the reader head code, to use it. And so how the reader head code works is it, it has a, a, a window. And if you hit the end of the window, then it will grow the window for the next batch it does. And so it, it gains confidence that you are, in fact, doing a sequential read, or something that's as close enough to be a sequential read that it, it, it should continue to do the prefetching that it is currently doing. And so all I did was increase the size of the page that we were allocating. So, in, so you start out with an order zero page, just, just as always, and then if you continue to hit order zero pages, you, suddenly, you, 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 start to, you start to allocate order two pages. And if you continue to hit order two pages, you start to allocate order four pages, which is 64 kilobytes, which is good for the CPU people, but that's not part of this project, remember. <coughs> um, so this, this is good because now both read and mmap can now create large pages. It also nicely solves the problem of, well, should I start using order two or order four pages? Because we, we will gradually build up to it. And that cage huge page D is still around. So the, the, the initial pages that we read, those, those can eventually get turned into two megabyte pages if they're still around by the time uh, the K huge, P, K huge page D gets to them because a lot of these streaming workloads, they're kind of throwing pages away behind them um, because those aren't going to be in use anymore. 
So maybe, maybe it will never matter, or if it does matter, then KeyHuge PageD will see them and replace them with a two megabyte page. Good. That's read ahead. I haven't really decided how we're going to start allocating these huge, page, these larger pages, if it's if it's a mostly write workload, uh, like the one that Christoph Lamater was describing. It's a mostly write workload. Um, I mean, that's that's going to be a different heuristic for what size pages to create and when, and so there's there's going to be plenty of scope to decide we should we should we should to decide what the algorithm should be for uh, creating large pages on right. So where's the code? <clears throat> I've been hacking on it all week. I've been running my laptop battery down in everybody's talk, trying desperately to get this code to work so that I could show you. But what I can show you is what a klutz I am when programming. On my way here at an airport, I, I, I proudly announced to the XFS IRC channel that I had it working, that I, I was doing huge page I.O. Then I put in a bit more debug code, and I realized that the pages that I had allocated, despite saying, hey, uh, I, would like to, I would like to allocate an order to page, I, I had missed one GFP flag. Um, because of this typo, this typo where I, where I put an extra S on the end of if def config transparent, I, I, I really wish we had tools to catch this kind of stupidity. <laughs> but no, blood, sweat, and tears. And uh, I, I, I then found out that, in fact, I was not doing huge page I.O. I was doing a, a regular, and in fact, I, I was al allocating order to page. Well, I was allocating four order zero pages, it turned out and then only doing I.O. to one of them. Um, so that, that really wasn't working. I thought it was working. It wasn't working. Um, and of course, once I fixed that, then I discovered that, in fact, I had other bugs um, because Linux oopsed for me. So that I discovered that you can't zero large pages because the way the, large pa the, the, way that the page zeroing code works is it, uh, it maps the page temporarily because the page might because you might still be running on an x86-32 system, and so you might have to actually map the page into the CPU's address space because it might be not in the, because it, it, it might be past the four gigabyte boundary. So it maps the page. And of course, when you map a page, you can only actually map a, 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 an order zero page. You can't map an order two page because th that system was never designed to do that. So, not shown on this slide is the implementation of zero user large because um, it, it's, it's, it's boring. Um, the second bug I found is uh, the, the, the next oops I had said uh, the reference count on this page is minus 508. <laughs> the, the, it's an order two page, so the reference count should have been four. And we'd subtracted something from four to get minus 508. 512. 500. Oh, it thought it was a two megabyte page. Quick rep. Ah, yeah, we're still, we, I, I, I missed a spot when I was doing the conversion of the page cache from being huge pages to large pages. OK, fine, done. That, that, that was a quick one. And the fourth one is that. Um, I, 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 we create this BIO, which is a, which does is is it's the the mechanism used to give IO to the block layer, and that's fine. It does the IO, and then I ask for ask for it to come back um, when it, when it returns the tail page. Um, it it says, so when 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 on on the completion. We have this bio iterator that calls uh, a, a function we have to uh, mark the page as being now up to date. And instead of giving me back the page that I gave it, it gives me back each page in turn. Um, I, I, didn't ha I ran out of time to fix this. <laughs> um, and so um, 
Sorry, what, 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 what time am I supposed to finish? Oh, OK, thank you. Um, uh, I, I, I may do a live demonstration if that's more interesting than questions. Uh, but that Git URL will be up to date uh, shortly. Um, it, it's, it's currently got the, uh, the, the, the um, allocate on page fault uh, code in it and rather than the uh, allocate on, on read ahead. So I will be pushing to that when, 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 when I get the chance. Um, with that, I can take some questions. I do want to, while, while people are rushing down to the microphone, <laughs> I, I want to plug, there's a Colonel Newbies boff, uh, tomorrow lunchtime, uh, set up by Adam Baxter. Um, so if you're interested in becoming a Colonel hacker and getting to stand up on stage and talk to people who are interested in what you're working on, Come along. Um, I'll be there. If, if you are an existing kernel hacker, I also encourage you to turn up and show some love to the newbies. Um, I, we, we desperately need more memory management people. The biggest problem we have in the memory management system is getting reviews from people because there just aren't enough of us to cope with the amount of change that, that's, that's needed. So um, please come along and uh, help. help introduce some people to being a kernel hacker, because being a kernel hacker is kind of cool, I think. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Anyone? Yes. Uh, you ran into some stuff in the file systems where you had to make small changes. Uh, and a few other places where there's assumptions of 4K pages. Mm. Where are you seeing the most default assumptions that use space, kernel space? Have you run into default, it's always 4K much yet? Ah, OK. I, I clearly didn't explain that properly. So it, th this is a transparent operation. Um, the, the user space never gets to know that you're using anything larger than the four kilobyte page because the, 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 um, the, the, it, it's, it's, it's the page in the page cache, which is of a larger size. It's not, uh, so the user space really has no way to tell. It's, it's, it's like transparent huge pages for anonymous memory or transparent huge pages with TempoFS. You can't tell. Other than you know, if you're doing a timing attack on it, you you, you could deduce it, but from from a, uh, a an application point of view, it's it's completely um, irrelevant, um, unless your performance goes up, in which case you know win. Um, I think the file systems are going to be the biggest um, problem. Uh, two, uh, I I I. I I've, I've done NFS and I've done XFS. Um, really, the, the, the important bit to get merged is the, the VFS parts, the page cache itself. And so in order to do that, I need one user. And two users is better than one, because if you only do one user, then you may end up tailoring your solution a bit too narrowly to, to, the, um, to the requirements of that one user. But having NFS and XFS helps me validate that I've, I've made the right decision. I mean, ideally, yes, I would go off and convert 30 plus different file systems. But that, that may have to be left as an exercise to the reader. <laughs> well, I've, I've got some backup material I can go through. So. Um, one of the things, when you, when you start hacking on this kind of thing, you, you, you start to notice other things that aren't necessarily part of what you were working on, but, oh, they're too ugly to continue to live. Um, so we, 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 have, we have this operation called read pages. So file systems, they, they, they implement, somebody was saying that Linux is actually surprisingly object oriented, and this, this, this is one of them. So each file system implements a method uh, called read pages. Um, well, they, they definitely implement read page because that's how you get a page into the page cache. But it, for, the, for the read ahead code, there's also a read pages operation. And it is just shockingly badly designed. 
Right. The, 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 for those who didn't hear, it's the, the S on the end is just killing me. Uh, see, see the earlier slide. Um, yeah, the, 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 the API passes these pages on a, on a doubly linked list, and the doubly linked list means that those pages can't be on the LRU list because, those pa because that's the same list head which is also used to put them on the LRU list. So file systems are responsible for actually putting these pages into the page cache themselves. Which is fine for um, for regular size pages, but if you if, if you're using large pages, then you get all these fun and exciting failure modes um, because some other task may have come in and inserted a page while you after you, after that page was allocated for you. So I'm just ripping the whole thing out and burning it. Um, so I've, I've got this new read ahead API, which is simpler for the file system to, to implement. Um, and if you are interested in this, you can go and look at it because I sent the patches out. I've sent two rounds of patches this week to sort this out um, because obviously that's much more important than working on my slides. <coughs> uh, <laughs> um, so I've got a couple of minutes. Do, do, you want to, do, you want, do you want me to try and do a live demo? You want to see a crash? Yeah. 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 My books, my books. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool, this is working. I, I was not sure this was going to work. OK. All right. So the, 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 I, I actually got given this uh, test suite by the, uh, the Zero Day project at Intel, who, who go off and do all the testing of various people's trees, uh, Git trees, um, before you even submit the patches to the mailing list. They, they, they go off and scrape your Git trees and say, hey, you've got a problem. You, I, you've published this, and you've got a problem in, in, in your code. So it's, um, this, it was for some completely other, other unrelated bug, but um, I'm a really bad sysadmin, and uh, this, this, this was perfect for me because it, it, they've, they've scripted everything. All I have to do is press the big red button mark go, and it runs uh, some of the, um, the XFS test suite, which is really good at whoopsing, yay. <laughs> Let's, let's just walk through this up since we've got a couple of minutes. There we are. So uh, the, the up starts around here. So that's saying page dumped because VM bug on page, not page locked page. Right, so what, what, what it's saying is that this page turns out, this page was supposed to be locked and it's not. And the reason it's not locked is this, um, this page, uh, where, is, where does it go? Huh, actually, I don't know why this page isn't locked. <laughs> hmm, that's funny. <laughs> But yeah, it, it's basically, it's, it's handed me a, a page I wasn't expecting to be uh, seeing, and so it, uh, it broke. Oh well. So now, 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 now I need to go off and figure out why it's given me the wrong page, and uh, why this is not the same wrong page that I got last time. Hmm. I'm sorry? Yeah, I've got another bug, yeah. Well, it, it, it might not be another bug, it might be a consequence of the same bug. Who knows? I mean, I, I, just, I just fix bugs. <laughs> and then eventually it will it'll start working, right? <laughs> All right, well, thanks everyone for coming.